Hello everyone and welcome to the Practical English Brain. I hope that while watching this video you're all in a good mood. So today my topic is the difference between idioms and proverbs. I'm gonna tell you in very simple words what the difference between idioms and proverbs is. And let me tell you this, it's very important to know how to use uh, common idioms and proverbs in your daily English. Uh, your English will definitely sound more native if you can use a lot of idioms and proverbs in your spoken and written English. So in simple words, uh, an idiom is a word or a phrase or a sentence, the meaning of which cannot be understood from the exact words. So in other words, the words say one thing, but the purpose or the meaning is something different. But Proverbs, uh, the most common or popular saying of people about a kind of general truth, about something that's obvious uh, in a society. So that's the difference. Uh, now I have five common idioms and five common Proverbs. I'm going to explain and use these common idioms and proverbs uh, in practical examples. Stay with me and let's begin with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is very kind and merciful. So the first idiom is a highways and byways. Uh, it means if you go to a place and you travel highways and byways, it means you take all these small and big roads in order to uh, search for something or in order to uh, just visit the entire uh, area. For example, you go to a country, you want to stay there for a month or two months and you are on vacation. So you say, when I was in Dubai, I drew highways and byways. Number two, my way or the highway. If somebody tells you my way or the highway, it means that that person wants uh, whatever, I mean, you're busy with or wh whatever the project is. So that person wants the project to be done the way they want it. So as soon as you hear that my way or highway, you should keep trying, you should keep insisting on doing uh, that the way you want it, okay? So uh, you should uh, accept this to be done the way I want it, or you should just quit trying. You should just, you know, leave the project alone and let me do it the way I want it. Number three, on the home stretch. On the home stretch. When we use this idiom, it means that we're about to achieve the goal. We're about to be done with whatever we do. So don't give up. For example, you have a YouTube channel, okay? and you have almost around eight or nine hundred uh, subscribers and the requirement is that you should hit a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch time in order to monetize your youtube channel so now you are about to give up you you you're kind of like stressed and you know uh, it's kind of difficult for you to reach to achieve your goal so someone is telling you you are on the home stretch please do not give up so it could be anything I mean, if you're on the home stretch, it means that you're about to achieve your goal. You're about to uh, get to where you want to you wanna get. And uh, number four, itchy feet. If someone has itchy feet, that person doesn't like to stay in one place for a long time. Like they want to travel and they want to go to different places. So, for example, my uncle always travels a lot. Uh, he has itchy feet. Uh, number five, to jump the lights, to jump the lights. If you keep driving while the traffic lights uh, turn red, it means that you are jumping the lights. So please don't jump the lights because the traffic police will fine you. Okay. And now we go to the Proverbs. The first proverb, says a bird in hand is worth two in the bush so now something that you have it is more valuable 
something that you wish to have it, that you hope to have it in the future. So try to uh, try not to take something for granted. I mean, this is another uh, kind of you know idiom. So uh, try to to to, to what you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, look at it as it, it's something important and something valuable for you, okay? So uh, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Um, now, for example, you say if we do this, if we do that, we're going to have uh, more students. Let's say you own an English institute. And you say if I do this, if I have this much marketing, I'm going to have more than 1,000 students. But you already have two or 300 students. So now, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Try to take good care of the students that you already have, okay? Try to bring more facilities and try to, you know, uh, make them more satisfied. So that's what it means, I mean, uh, this proverb. Number two, actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. Now, uh, I mean, what somebody does is more important to, to know what kind of person, I mean, uh, he or she is. Uh, because uh, it's easy to say the words, but it's difficult to, to do what you're saying, okay? Uh, for example, uh, I mean, uh, if, you just, if I just give you an example, I mean, the Afghan government and Taliban have been busy with the peace negotiation and they promise the Afghan nation that there's going to be peace in the future but actions speak louder uh, than words. Sorry, there's no S. Actions speak louder than words. It means what they say, they don't follow it, they don't implement it. Number three, a journey of thousand miles begins with a single step. A journey of thousand miles begins with a single step. This proverb means that no matter how difficult something could be, how big your goal could be, or how big something a task could be, or, or something to be achieved, or to be accomplished, but you just need to, to start it. I mean, you just need to take the step, okay? So with a single step, you start what you want to do, okay, and your big could be very, I mean, uh, uh, your goal, sorry, could be very big, but you can achieve it if you take the step. If you don't take the step, you know, it's not going to happen, okay. So taking the step, I mean, is the first um, thing that you can achieve your goal, and the big uh, thing or the difficult thing may become easier for you if you take the first step. Okay, number four, among the blind, the one-eyed is king. Among the blind, the one-eyed is king. So someone with uh, 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 incapability of doing something, among other people who are even more incapable of doing something, is like a king. So this uh, proverb uh, really fits, I mean, our environment, our society nowadays. For example, just to give you an easy example, okay, uh, let's say Mm, a lot of people don't know English language in a place, in an environment, and there is somebody who knows a little bit of English, okay? So all the other people think that his English is perfect, and I mean, he, let's say he's a teacher, so he can have hundreds of students, because the students don't know how, much, how strong his English, English is. So among those people who don't know English, the one who knows a little bit English, is like you know a king but when uh, I mean there are other people whose English could be stronger than that person's English then he's not going to be a king anymore okay so people will know what the truth is um, because I mean they didn't know before but somebody else came to that environment and now that person you know explains I mean or that person shows the inability or I mean the mistakes or the weakness of the, the person who was king among the others. So I hope you understood uh, how to use this proverb in your spoken English. And finally, we have an, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. So it means that if you are on a healthy diet, 
if you don't eat just a lot of junk food and uh, you, I mean, have a lot of fruit um, as a diet, uh, then you don't need to go and see doctors every time. You don't get sick easily, okay? So an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh, it means try to have a healthy food, try not to eat a lot of junk food, okay? And uh, this way, I mean, you won't uh, be getting sick a lot and you won't have to go and see doctors all the time. So I hope you learned how to use these items and proverbs in your spoken and written English. In the future, I'm going to be trying to collect more common items and uh, expressions and proverbs and teach you uh, these common proverbs, expressions and items so that you can improve your spoken English a lot. Uh, for now, this much is enough. Have a great time. Bye-bye.